Hi, and welcome to another chat. Someone who normally talks about submarines, begrudgingly, I'm going to accept that aircraft carriers are also very important weapons of war, and they're an increasingly important part of major navies' lineups. We're seeing a renaissance of the aircraft carrier, and China itself is building aircraft carriers. These are US Navy aircraft carriers operating in the South China Sea. But from all indications of aircraft carrier construction, the days the aircraft carrier are far from numbered. However, they are the target of ever more sophisticated weapons, kill, carrier killers, as we call them. So we're going to talk a bit about those weapons, in particular China's. Like my other chats, this is unscripted. That's obvious already, I know. Um, just a guy talking about defense analysis, basically. Um, so let's get on with it. The interesting thing about the targets that China is testing its missiles on is that they're not at sea. They're actually in the desert. So why is China building these carriers in the desert? By desert, um, China is a really large country. And although it's got the largest population in the world, a lot of it is very low populated desert. And it's ideal for dropping bombs and things to test stuff. This is an example in April 20. Uh, sorry, April 24th this year, you can see this corner of desert, nothing in it. And over the next few weeks, we see something being constructed. And what that is, is an aircraft carrier target. You can see it here. This is low resolution satellite imagery. I use this a lot in defense analysis, very powerful. Um, if you're not seeing the aircraft carrier, there's the outline of it. And if you're not believing that's an aircraft carrier, if you don't think we can, we can say that with any confidence, here's another one 325 miles away. And it's the same outline. This one has been filled in. It's a bit, the construction is further along. And there's no doubt that that is an aircraft carrier. So it's actually one of a number of these targets. The reason that they're building them is to um, practice with anti-ship ballistic missiles. An ASBM, it's interesting. When we think of ballistic missiles, we think of something that goes up and comes down in a predictable ballistic trajectory, like an arrow from a bow and arrow. But actually, modern ballistic missiles are not truly ballistic. They have maneuvering re-entry vehicles. They can change the trajectory um, on the re-entry. There's two ways of doing this, or two main categories. The first is just a simple maneuvering re-entry vehicle. This has typically fins, like shown here, um, that allow it to change its trajectory. Another one is the hypersonic glide vehicle. This is aerodynamically shaped to allow it to sort of skim off the atmosphere and, and glide, essentially. China has both these technologies and is a little bit much of a muchness when it comes to the topic at hand. I'll leave it to people who are much more into missiles than I am to explain the pros and cons and you know, the advantage of different, different aerodynamic configurations. But with these in general, you're getting higher accuracy because it can, can correct any, any sort of stray or errors in its trajectory. They can hit moving targets provided there is a means of guidance. They can also have unpredictable flight paths, which makes them much harder to intercept. Uh, ballistic missiles are already hard enough, but these are going to be much harder. And at least for the hypersonic glide vehicle, they have longer range, all other things being equal. Let's look at the targets. This is where it gets interesting. So China is a massive country. Let's say a lot of it's desert. There are a series of target ranges running in a, approximately in a line along the edge of a desert in the west of the country. If we zoom in on one of them, it can look like this. This is an aircraft carrier. This is the clearest image, I think. The satellite images from Maxar. Um, they provided a lot of satellite imagery to the US Naval Institute news that I wrote for on this topic. Um, I think it's, it, there's no doubt that's an aircraft carrier, it just isn't. Um, there's a lot of these targets, I say, they're not all aircraft carriers. There's air bases, there's all sorts of things. And they, they're using aircraft as well as missiles to hit the, the targets with bombs or whatever. But these ones are specifically for anti-ship ballistic missiles. 
They were actually found initially or shared with me initially by a company called All Source Analysis, although I broke the story in US Naval Institute news. And if you've heard the story in the last uh, six months or so, it's it's after I um, I did the sort of breaking story. But All Source Analysis shared it with me. I did do analysis after that, of course. Um, keenly interested, but hats off to these guys. Back to satellite imagery. Um, so when I was writing for US Naval Institute News, Maxar provided this and they have to other media as well. A company called Capella have a different type of satellite. This is a radar satellite, synthetic aperture radar. It's not exactly the same as the radar picture you'd get from a missile, but it shows us that these do show up quite well in radar. And that's really interesting. It's just that radar is one of, or if not the main guidance means for these missiles. We think that they're ballistic missiles because if you were using other types of anti-ship missile, for example, a sea skimming missile like the Neptune shown here, which is quite famous for its recent attack on Russian warships, you would have some sort of a boat over water with a vertical side to it, which is the, uh, the target because these missiles hit from the side. So the aircraft carrier shape on the ground would not be suitable for testing a, um, a sea skimming missile, for example. And it's not just aircraft carriers. They also have um, other types of warship. Here is a destroyer. And it's really interesting. This is a flat target on the ground, but they've drawn shapes in it, um, which suggest either visual or infrared, possibly radar guidance. There's lots of vertical um, uh, sort of poles standing up. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but what's interesting about this particular destroyer is that there's no doubt that this is a US Navy destroyer, very specifically a US Navy destroyer. Um, other destroyers, similar size, similar configuration, but this one, US Navy. So there's no, no doubt really who the targets are. Of course, these weapons could equally be used against other adversaries of China. This is a moving target, so it's on rails. These rails are quite wide. They run for a really long way and they allow them to hit moving targets. And we know from these rails, this is an aircraft carrier target again, we know that it is a, um, a moving target arrangement. And we know that because as well as just analyzing the, the imagery, we actually have a model of a system like this at a Chinese trade show, defense show. Um, it's not identical, but it's very, very similar. And there was a label on it, pretty hard to read. This has been distorted, you know, tried to be straightened out actually rather, um, but it can be translated to land-based systematic integrated electronic Blue Army system. Just a point of interest, Blue Army in Chinese military jargon is enemy. Um, the West, they see themselves as red. So it's the same way around as the West, but different perspective. Um, what's interesting about this target is you can see those little triangles um, standing up. They're radar reflectors. They tell us that this is intended to be um, visible and give a radar picture of the target. And the same integrated electronic system. Electronic here, I think, means radar. There's more targets, of course. This is a different site again. Um, this was shared with me by Damien Simon. He is a defense analyst. You can see um, his Twitter is, is great. How he found the target is itself really interesting, but maybe for another, another chat sometime. This particular target is not full size, but it is very, very large, about half size. And you can see the shadows of those poles standing up, those radar reflectors. The island has a particularly tall mast of them, probably not just radar reflectors, probably also cameras and other sensors, sensors to measure the missile coming in and, and so on. Another type of target they have that's naval is a port. Um, you can see here the, P's, the piers or, or quayside. There's a destroyer based uh, or size target there. Um, quite interesting, this is when it was uh, fresh. And if you look closely on the, the insert, you can see two dark rectangles approximately where the superstructure or, or funnels would be. 
possibly there for infrared targeting, possibly it's for radar. I'm not entirely sure, but we do know that they can hit them. So this is an impact on that exact target. Now, there's also a circular target bottom left. It's very not very clear in a satellite image because it's just markings on the ground, but they wouldn't need to build such elaborate targets if it was just air launched missiles that they're testing where are humans in the loop or if it was just ballistic missiles which are aimed at a certain coordinate. Clearly, these weapons, whatever they are, must look for a specific shape, either radar or infrared, on the ground ship and can discern the difference between the ship and the pier side and hit the ship. So there's AI involved. That's the implication. The same type of target elsewhere. The one on the left was only found more recently. However, it's actually older. When you can check historic imagery, you, we confirmed it was actually built in 2018. Again, Damien Simon um, found that. So the takeaways, the weapon systems being tested here can identify targets, else there wouldn't be a need to make the targets so believable from uh, you know, radar infrared spectrums. They can hit moving targets. And the use of the, the targets that are designed to look like a port imply a missile Pearl Harbor type scenario. Once a war is ongoing, ships that are within range of, of the enemy would not hang around in port very much at all. They'd try to be out and moving and so on. So to hit ships in port implies um, a sort of a Pearl Harbor, an initial attack scenario. scenario. Okay, where do they launch them from? China has three projects. One is for ground-based missiles. One is air-launched and one is sea-based. The sea-based is by ships. We haven't seen any submarine-launched versions, but that would be a potential development. Firstly, the ground-based ones. These are the oldest. Starting in 2009, they've been filled in a DF-21D. This has an 800 nautical mile range and a, a Mach 8, so 10 times, the, sorry, Mach 10, 10 times the speed of sound. Definitely a hypersonic weapon, like most ballistic missiles. Pretty capable system, but more recently in 2020, it's been uh, augmented or superseded by the more capable DF-26B system. Interesting here, much longer range, but it's also a more modern, conceptually more modern system. The missile can be modified in the field between anti-ship ballistic missile or to hit ground-based targets, different types of warhead and so on. So it's a very versatile system. These are both operated by the People Liberation Army's rocket force, not the Navy. But that doesn't stop them from targeting naval vessels, of course. The air launch system is a little bit less clear. This is the largest missile in the world. You can see it here underneath, oh, sorry, largest air launch missile in the world, should I say, underneath a H-6 bomber. Here's my visualization, the graphic I did of it for Naval News. One slight issue here. At the time that I did this, we assumed that it was a, a Naval um, operated bomber, but actually I think these bombers are operated by the Air Force. Um, so that implies that possibly they're not um, for targeting ships. But there's, I would say that if you've got an air-launched ballistic missile with a maneuvering re-entry vehicle, then you have some capability against ships, at least static ships. So we don't know very many details about this, but it does strongly suggest ASBM capabilities from aircraft. That would give them an extremely long range. Next, we have surface launch. Interesting, um, this graphic I did um, showing a, a, a Chinese cruiser in 2020, pretty much right. In 2022, we found out the missile is the, the YJ-21. At least that's what we believe its designation is. We don't have got confirmation from China, so it might be called something different. But um, this system is interesting because the Chinese cruisers and large destroyers have a vertical launch system that has a larger size than the US equivalent, the Mark 41 and Mark 57. So they can carry larger missiles, including these ballistic missiles. And 
although they're still smaller than some of the other systems, so we infer a shorter range, they've probably got a very long range all the same, and they're very potent um, against both land targets and sea-based targets based on what we've seen of the tar of the, uh, the the targets in the desert. So this is really interesting because they can be carried by the vertical launch system. So it implies that many more can be carried than by us, the other systems. Of course, I don't think they would dedicate every single cell on the VLS to these missiles, but there's 112 cells, I think, going by memory. A large number, they, they could carry a large number of these missiles, no doubt. Okay, other countries also have these. I'm not going to talk much about um, India or America, who possibly have some capability in this space. Um, one to talk about is Iran and Russia. So Iran was an early adopter, only a couple of years behind China. They developed quite a short range ballistic missile. They attached an infrared guided uh, nose essentially to an existing short range ballistic missile. We know that um, Iranian missiles are now quite, quite potent and very accurate. Um, this one only has an accuracy of about 8.5 meters, which is not great, but it's also very good if you're uh, good enough, let's say, if you're hitting an aircraft carrier. Its range is quite comparatively short, but remember that they'll be operating the Persian Gulf or, or Arabian Sea. In 2017, they produced an improved version with radar guidance. Don't have much specs about this, but clearly an improved version. The missiles themselves, I think should be taken very seriously. A bit of a comic turn though, um, like China, Iran built aircraft carriers as targets. These ones are floating. Um, and clearly this is as much a propaganda, you know, a TV stunt as it is um, practical uh, testing of the ballistic missiles. Um, this is towed out and, and then they attack it with various systems, uh, explosive boats and torpedoes and whatever, um, including ballistic missiles reportedly. What's slightly funny here is that the target's not meant to sink. The idea of these target barges is that they can be, you break big holes in them, it looks good, but ultimately they don't sink. You, you uh, tow it back to port, you mend it and you use it again and again and again. Um, but sadly for them, you can see that it didn't work that way. When they towed it back, it actually sunk right outside their port. It was a bit of a hazard to navigation for quite a long while. You can see it there upside down. That's why it looks sort of like a skeleton. That's the, the aircraft carrier bit. The, the flight deck is underwater there. I'd say it's pretty embarrassing for them. Um, it took them quite a long time to, to salvage this. Another country, Russia. Um, two systems in there, among their sort of hypersonic super weapons, Zircon and Kinzel. Zircon is an anti-ship missile. It's launched from vertical launch systems again, so by warships. It's a fair bit smaller, I think, um, than these other systems. It's not actually an anti-ship ballistic missile. It's more a cruise missile. So it's not an ASBM, but in many respects, operationally, there's some similarities, and it definitely pushes... Um, the threat, uh, increases the threat um, to aircraft carriers. The other system is Kinzel. This is an air-launched ballistic missile seen here under a Foxhound fighter bomber. Um, they're also likely to be carried by black, sorry, backfire bombers in future. Russia has always maintained that this is a maritime relevant and anti-ship ballistic missile as well as being able to hit land targets there's some question marks about that i think it's unproven and it's debatable whether it can hit moving targets but certainly should be taken seriously okay thank you very much for listening as i said this was unscripted it shows it's going to be uploaded unedited just raw just a guy talking about defense analysis if you liked it please do share it please give it a like um, thank you for listening <laughs>